Hey friends, Ryan out here. It's like April 8th, 2023. And we're finally, sorry for the drunk camera work, getting back to this homebrew machine here. So today we're gonna fix uh, the machine up by installing a bunch of the parts. So I got, so when I started this thing like two years ago and then put it aside, I bought pretty much everything uh, for it, I think. We're gonna have to put it together to see what I'm missing. Uh, but I did 3D print these handy dandy deals here to help you put the the leg holes in, right? So there's two different sizes. One's for the front, sorry, for the front is the big one here and the back is the small one, I believe. So let me verify that and we'll show you how it works. Okay, yeah, so the shorter ones go in the back. Right, so you can see this print failed, but it's good enough for the girls we're dating here. So it's a 3 8 inch hole. Hopefully I made the holes big enough, but basically it's got this flat part at the bottom and is angled. So you just stick it on there, slide it up, and perfect 45 degree drill holes. So you do that on the other side and then the back, same principle. So... I have to sand the edges down a little bit, but yeah, see they're locked in. Actually locked in a lot better if you cut the top off like this. It's good to know for future reference. So let me set up a tripod and we'll get to drilling holes. And we're back after some who hit the damn drill shenanigans. Okay, so I got a little ratchet strap here cinched down fairly tightly to hold that in place. I don't have to hold it. We got our 3 8 inch drill and some safety glasses that I don't have on. So it fits in there reasonably good. There's still a little play, but we're just gonna like go for it. Turn the clutch all the way down on my drill here. Hear what I was doing. Worked pretty good, actually. You're not in frame after that. All right, let's do this side. So you gotta kind of get the drill going because if you're right on the corner when you start, so if you put it in there and then go, it dances around. So you're going through the corner of the wood and you're also going through the angled brace that's grilled or glued in the middle. And I don't think I hit any brad nails, so we're good there. There's a giant damn mess of sawdust here. Looks pretty good to me. Nice and clean and professional. Ish, as professional as this video is. So this is pretty simple to design. It took me like two minutes and then took forever to print because I, for some reason, thought I had to have really deep, dense uh, infill, which I don't think you do. As long as you put a pretty good route around your holes you should be fine you're not really doing structural you're just trying to hold it all right so i'm going to do the other corners and we will come back all right i guess i should add that i'm using mjr net i guess i don't know his guide to how to build a virtual machine cab obviously it's the same cab 
So, because he modeled it off a of WPC, like, you know, Star Trek, not Star Trek, that's a white body, but like Doctor Who or whatever. All right, so when I got this flipped over, I got these here furniture sliders. I'm gonna put some on. I put them three inches down, three inches up, and then in the middle. Um, regular caps have these just so you're not riding in the wood. But, you know. It's cold, so my hands hurt. So you don't do that to it. Okay, that was loud. Anyway, can do the other one. Here's the leg. Okay, so you need a leg, obviously. You need these side brackets or whatever you're gonna use. So these are made, see the holes are different. So, remember how we said the top ones are higher than the bottom? So, if you look at the, the, or the front ones, I guess, versus back, these are made to fit like that and sit more or less at the bottom. And then, if you turn this in the back, flip it over, it will sit mostly at, more or less at the bottom on there too. So this plus or minus just because it is. Uh, then we got our head or our leg bolts, nice little new acorns. And then you need number eight by five eighths wood screws. I don't have any of them. I have number eight by three quarters. So we're gonna uh, hope this doesn't go all the way through. If not, I'm gonna have to stop and go get some damn Start a list and go get some screws. And I have a feeling that they might go all the way through. Rude. Okay, let's see. So you put that in there. Mm. Might work. Might be a little bit long, but. Make do with what you want, right? So the easiest way to measure where you're supposed to bolt these things is take your leg, stick a bolt through it, hope it fits. Oh man, it even lines up. You take your bracket. Try not to give yourself a hernia moving your cabinet around because you're old now shape and it's heavy. Trip over station cords and go in your go bag. Remember, this step is important, right? Because your whole 300 whatever pound cabinet is going to be sitting on these things. So you got to make sure that they're secure. Get them good enough. 
two coats so you can't take them off of there again. And hope your cabinet doesn't split open. All right, so I gotta make sure I bought leg levelers. So we'll put that on there, we'll put the other three legs on, and we'll come back and do the inside. How's that sound? All right, here's a pro tip on installing leg levelers. About half the ones you see will be installed incorrectly. All right, make sure you get these really, really long ones. That, but they'll have the, the bolt on the top here, like this. That is not how you do it. That bolt doesn't really do anything. To do it, you take it, thread it on here. The front ones you can put however you want. I usually put the front ones all the way down. all the way down and I don't know that I have the right wrench with me or not but anyway so then you put it all the way down and then you tighten it or you whichever height you want it then you tighten it and it's like jam metal against it and it can't do anything whereas if it's up here it's just loosens so That's how we do that. Okay, I had to take a minute here. <laughs> I can't tell you how satisfying it is to have this on legs. I mean, nothing else, just on legs after this long. It's, I didn't think I would be this happy about it. It's amazing. All right, let's set up on the inside of the cabinet and we'll see what we're doing. All right, well, I couldn't really get a good angle where I wasn't hunched over, but. So, all right, be careful depending on what screws you use, or what wood you use here. Those will just strip out immediately, the middle ones. So let's see what else we got in our goodie box over here. And start assembling more stuff. All right, well, flipper buttons are pretty too easy to install, right? You get a flipper button, which I don't think red's going to go with the motif I'm going for right now. But uh, we'll put them in there and get some probably blue or purple. This is a flipper button switch and a nut, right? So turn it around and get you really busy here. Obviously, you stick your button in, and this goes so they both fit in the hole there, and then you stick your nut. self-explanatory all right the next thing we're gonna do is the shooter rod right why not so you get this assembly that fits I'll try this hopefully it fits that does not fit in there So we're going to have to give it a little love. But regardless, you got a shooter backing plate here. Screws in there. And then there's two screws here for your, or two holes for your number eight. So it holds it in place when you take it off. Well, this may need number sixes. Yeah, we're going to have to go with sixes on this because it's, eights are too big. Um, and you get you some, obviously, and then it holds it together. So let me make this hole just a little bit bigger. Sixes, and we'll put that on. All right, well, we got that on there. That was fun. Next, we got a nice little coin door here. So this is a Suzo hat, I guess, whatever. Patty style. 
Uh, so it's got these four little carriage bulb holes. And, uh, uh oh, there's a light bulb. Lock washer, I guess. What that's called. So, one of these bolts, the top one here, has to come off for the lockdown bar to go on. But, put that on there. Kind of finger tight for a minute. Keep all my bolt holes. In fact, the line up. Live on camera. What do you think? Right. Holy crap. Look at that. Light bulb. I guess these clips on there. Alright. Tighten those bottom three and see where about this. Sharp pointy bits on the bottom of it. So it will go right here. And so here's a bolt with that. have a few wood screws on the back that we'll put in. Take a real test here so these are lining up. Success! What's the windows thing? Ta Alright, and then there's one two, three screws there, screw holes. So we'll put them in, tighten all this down, come back. All right, well, got that in. The next thing we're gonna do is the rails here. So you got this deal that sits in here and the glass slides through that channel to hold it. And that's why when we were building, we routed this slot in here, right? So it's got this kind of textured end on it to quote unquote hold it in here. But so it is actually kind of snug to fit in there. So let's grab it away. Um, so yeah, the glass threads through there, and then there's another one that goes on the end here which we should probably put on first, but we got our side rails, which this is covered in a film, you can see. To protect it during shipping or whatever, but it's got a hole there and a hole at the other end that a bolt goes through. And you're technically supposed to put a strip of tape down it to hold it on there, but I ain't gonna do that because I'm lazy. So it goes on like so. And exactly, I'm gonna have to look where it's supposed to stop. I think it's kind of about right there. Um, and then you put a bolt through to hold it on. So it kind of hides the spot to get up. So this other deal that goes at the top Obviously, the lock-in bar goes at the bottom. It's like so. So you put your little screws in and hand tighten them. And then the glass sits here, which is why we cut a bevel in there. Or a yeah, bevel, right? So the glass slides up. Otherwise, it'd be the glass would be sliding up. This is an extreme example. Like, like this, trying to fit into it. Whereas if we got that bevel, now this is tilted down, if that makes no sense. But this will 
think this is made to be like whatever you can use it for a wide body. So I gotta go trim it down, I think, to fit in there. So probably just that chunk off right there. there and then last fit just right. So let me put all that on. So you obviously got to drill holes for these screws wherever they go. Looks good. All right. Sorry for shaky cam. We got that on there. Looks pretty good. I do not have a glass for this, unfortunately. I, I'm going to have to measure it and order it, make sure I uh, get it so it fits. But regardless, it's on there. Let's see okay so the next thing we're going to do is mount the back box so it comes with or mounts with these t-nuts that go up under here and then these wing nuts for ease of use technically you probably don't need these fender washers which i had these for i bought a set of head bolts for an em a while ago but i happen to have these otherwise i wouldn't but for some reason in the guide it says to make these giant holes uh, for your head bolts. I think if you're making this, it might be easier to like make that without them holes and make it without those. And you know, once you get your wire pole, whatever lined up, clamp it on there and then just drill holes so that they're in the right place and they're the right size and they're together. But anyway, it may say that, and I may have just done it because I'm an idiot, but regardless. So we're going to put that on there, get it clamped down. And then we've got this safety latch here, which mounts, you know, on the back. And it's got this deal that it clips to so that it's clipped down while you're taking the, these out. And then you unclip it to lay it down. And then we got our hinges here. So we're going to... Uh, the hinges will be easier to do when it's on there and they can just line up. And we also got these backer plates for the hinges. Uh, so anyway, let me mount it there and it'll be easier to explain. All right, I got it rather precariously sitting up there. So I'm falling my damn head here. Got our fender washer, our lock, our T-nut, and our wing nut. So I'm going to do, feed that all the way through, start it, I wonder why the damn T-nut won't go on the wing nut for more than a few threads. See, if you had a damn Half and die set, this would be easier, but I can see there's a bunch of gunk, like weld slag in there. I may have to get all that out. I'm following me, damn it. This one looks clean for demonstration purposes. All right, center it. And then all right. Okay, so that's about halfway in there. I'm gonna take this out, hammer it the rest of the way. And I'm gonna figure out how come this one's all jacked up here out some of the slag out of the threads and we'll be golden and what that's about come on Marco do better all right people shaky cam here we got this side done I'm gonna show you real quick how we do the other side there for the back box if you're not seasick 
pull real extension cords. Okay, so we got a pivot bushing here and a carriage bolt for this hinge. All right, so you send that in there. Finger tight, and you find your <coughs> Allen wrench that is over there. And it won't go all the way tight because it's got a, you know, it's pivot right so you just want to get it so it's not going to fall out okay i mean it's tight but it won't like cramp down on the wood so then you put your hinge up and see that you did in fact drill your holes in the wrong place on this side as well i don't know if i measured from the, the wrong back or front or what but anyway so an inch off. It's awesome. Sorry, right, the holes aren't big enough anyway. She said, right? So you take your drill bit. I think this is 3 eighths. I don't know. And don't worry about splitting it out and making it look ugly because it's still going to look better than your mom. Try and get it relatively straight. <laughs> Okay, so then we got our car carriage bolt, fender washer, and backing plate here. Put that through there, put that on there. or your right hand or whatever. Uh, skin your knuckles on the end. Not there. Tell your wrist not to be cold. all that good and tight because maybe not now but once you get all the stuff in there it's going to be heavy so well, i'm going to cut just so i can prove to you how bad i screwed this up here all right let's fold it down I 
get a die set too. So maybe my other holes were correct because it's sitting on the back end and not the front end. And it would have anyway, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. that let me see what else we got and we'll keep on going all right so i drilled out the other holes and put them forward so the back box is actually sitting like this far back past the edge of it for some reason uh, but now it lays down like it should flat so uh, when i move it it won't like break everything so i gotta tighten all the bolts down but i mean it still looks fine from the front it's just weird that nothing lines up. I didn't have that problem on the other one, the virtual one I built. All right, so I've got buttons and in frame. I got buttons for this somewhere. They must be upstairs in my pile of crap. Um, I'm pretty sure I have blue buttons. I bought a bunch from Todd Tucky that were used. So if there's clean ones, I might do it or I might just order some. I don't know. Um, I have the playfield hangers, which obviously I don't have a playfield. I have the playfield hinges and the hinges like for the inside of the thing and I got the bolts and stuff over there. Uh, other than that, I think we're pretty good on hardware for right now. I think the next step is deciding what we're gonna do. So my vision is I'm gonna put like a speaker grill across the bottom with the score reels in the middle. So it's kind of EM-ish. And then have the TV up above it. So we eventually gotta figure out how to mount all that. And I gotta order the fast hardware. And I gotta figure out where to start with the CNC thing. Um, for the play field. I do have to measure, um, I'm gonna, let's see. I have to measure off of something, either Doctor Who or start, probably Doctor Who in there, but I've got the, the guide rails. I'm not afraid which way they go. I think they're like that. Um, for this, and I've got a flipper assemblies and bumper assemblies and all that upstairs. I mean, I could start white wooden it like manually. We'll see how long it takes to get a CNC machine that does circles well because the mass load is all right, but it doesn't do great with that. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's a pretty good start. Those big holes are for fans. For some reason, I thought that the Thing was going to be running really hot. Uh, I only have one fan left, I think, so I got to get more. That hole in the bottom is for power, obviously. I think those holes in the back are vents or for the ground effects lighting, probably is what I'll use them for. Anyway, yeah, let me know what you think. We're getting there. It's amazing how quickly that all came together. Now it looks like a pinball machine instead of a giant pile of wood. Anyway, 
keep it real. Stay tuned for the next episode, which not sure what we're going to do, to be honest. We'll see what happens. All right. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. That's great.